Okay, in this video, we're going to learn how to represent any vector as a combination of other vectors. And specifically, where we want to get is to represent a vector as a combination of vectors that are parallel to either the x or the y axis, or probably um, a little bit of both. As in, we have some that are parallel to the x and some that are parallel to the y. So, look at the vector we have here, the vector I've called A. And I've marked, uh, I've marked the units on the x-axis. And <clears throat> the drawing might be a little bit crude, but what, I, what I've tried to do is to show that this vector goes over in the x-direction. One, two, three, four, five. And up in the y-direction. One, two, three. So we've gone uh, over three in the x and, sorry, over five in the x and up 3 in the y. So y you probably already can tell some things about this vector. It forms a line whose slope is 3 over 5, rise over run. Uh, so you know at this point it looks uh, very similar to some geometry or probably some trigonometry that you've done. Um, so if you think about this vector as a displacement. This is just an example. This will work with any vector, whether or not it's a displacement, a, a velocity, an acceleration, a force, what have you. The technique we're going to talk about here will work um, with any of those, but for the sake of just sort of making it clear in our mind, think about this vector as a displacement. And think about that you are undergoing this displacement. In other words, you start here at the origin and you walk all the way over here to the point um, 5, 3. Right? And you can, you guys can probably use some trigonometry at this point to figure out how far you walked, uh, the angle by which you walked. Um, so you, you already know a lot of things about this. Now let me ask you this. If all you care about is where you end up, in other words, you don't care about how long it takes, you don't care about how far you have to walk, if all you care about is starting from this point and ending at this point, does it matter if you take this path that I've drawn in red, if you go, in other words, right along the vector, or maybe you could take another path. You could first go here. Sorry, let me do that better. Here, and then you could walk over here, and then you could walk down here and then you could walk here. And you end up at the same spot. Now obviously you walked a lot farther, right? You got a little bit more exercise. Uh, but if all you care about is where you end up and where you start, then either of these paths is okay. So what I've actually done here is I've drawn four different vectors. We'll call this one B, C, D, and E. And what I can say, that's a terrible looking D, what I can say is that vector A then is equal to the sum, the vector sum of B plus C plus D plus E. So that's either a reminder or a foreshadow because we're going to cover vector addition in a different video. Uh, but I just want to uh, mention it here because I want to point out that uh, I can take the vector A and I can do what we call decomposition. I can decompose it into this combination of the other vectors. In other words, I can take A and I can split it up and say, well, you know what, instead of talking about the vector A, I'm going to talk about the vector I get as a result of B plus C plus D plus E. In this case, uh, what I've drawn here would be really unuseful, right? There, there's not much we can do about that. But as it turns out, there are some paths, and one in particular, I should say alternative paths, to get from, you know, where I start to where I finish, that might be more useful than the path I've drawn here. So let me erase all this stuff. And we can talk about some paths that might be more useful. So just to sum up, if all I care about is where I start and where I finish, any path I take, I can draw as many vectors on here as I want to, right? I can get from the origin to the end of this A vector through any amount of paths. But there are a couple of them that are going to do me some good. Actually, there's one of them 
uh, that's going to do me some good. So let me change colors here. What if to get to the to to the endpoint of vector a, I take this path. I start at the origin, and I move over five units in the x direction, and then let me change colors again. I move up three units in the y direction. Again, I've gotten to the endpoint, right? I've I've made it to my destination. And the path I took was a little bit longer than it would have if I'd just gone straight uh, along A. But I've done it, right? And you maybe start to see why this is useful to us. Because what I've actually made here is a nice right triangle. And we know a lot of stuff about right triangles. We know how to uh, do the, use the Pythagorean theorem. As soon as I do this, you know, I make an angle theta here. And I make an angle phi here. And I know some stuff about sines and cosines and tangents. And I can probably do a lot with this. And so uh, the reason I want to do this is because if I just use the vector A, that's probably going to be a little bit difficult. I might not know what angle uh, that makes with the x or y axis. Uh, I might have a little trouble doing um, vector mathematics with it. But if I can decompose that vector into these, we'll call this B and C. If I can decompose the vector A into these particular vectors, which lie along the X and Y axes, then I can do a lot of stuff. I'm in a good position. So we're going to represent these in a certain way. So to do that, let me introduce you to somebody. Uh, let me go to a new slide. And I will redraw my axes. Oh, this is going to be... The lines aren't going to be straight here, sorry. Just imagine y and x and let me put in my tick marks or my hash marks so there's one there's two there's three there's four there's one two three right three and four yeah it's close enough so notice what i've done over here is i've gone uh, in this case, five units in the x direction and three units in the y direction. So what if, what if I make a very special vector and that vector is going to look like this, All right? It's going to have a magnitude, not mg, mag, magnitude of one. And it's always, always, always going to lie in the x direction. What I've done is I've created a very special unit called a unit vector. This one that lies along the x-axis is usually called i hat. So I put a little carrot on top of it. I usually call it a hat or some in some older textbooks you'll see it called a cap. Uh, so I write a script i and I put a carrot on it instead of a dot and I call it i hat. Some textbooks will use this notation, x hat. Some textbooks will use this notation, e x hat. But I'm probably not going to use any of that. I'm going to stick to i hat. i hat is a unit vector in the x direction. That is, it's a vector with magnitude 1 that always lies in the x direction. Of course, I need other vectors besides that, so let me introduce you to another guy, and it's this guy. This is the vector j hat. Of course, some people call it y hat. Some people call it e sub y hat. You will see those in other textbooks. It's a terrible y. Um, but again, we're not going to use those. We'll stick to j hat. It is our unit vector in the y direction. Magnitude 1, always lying in the y direction. There's one in the z direction too. I'll mention that's called k. I'm not going to draw that because I have a two-dimensional iPad and uh, they haven't come out with the iPad 3D yet, right? So with that in mind, what if I write this? Let me change colors again. What if I write that the vector a is equal to th five units, five units, in the x direction, which I will write 5 times i hat. Remember, i hat has a magnitude of 1. It's in the x direction. So what I, all I've said here is that I've gone 5 units in the x direction, and then I'm going to go plus 3 units 
in the y direction. 5i hat plus 3j hat. I hope this made sense. We'll unpack this more in later videos.